It's a while until Season 10, so there's time to grind up to a higher peak rank before the season ends. Even the top 100 players, let alone 500, have a hard time getting champion. With damage heroes being so strong and Venture joining the lineup soon, getting good starts now. With one pro tip for every DPS. If you want to grind the meta or rank up on your favorite heroes, use the link in the description to get access to a Game Leap membership. There are tons of courses and guides to help you improve faster and easier. Check it out and enjoy the video. Although Venture won't be out until Season 10, there's already a bunch of cool tricks and tech for the hero. One of the most interesting ones is how to stall the longest with your burrow. You can actually be underground for longer than the 4 second duration. The way to do it is to use both your underground drill dash and the fully charged emerge to delay as long as possible. Doing it right gives you at least 6 seconds underground. That means by the time you leave, both your shield health and your normal health have been regenerating. It's great for when you get forced to burrow but want to stay in the area. At the end of your dig, right before it kicks you out, that's where you can drill dash underground to extend your burrow. And then right as it ends and is about to automatically force you to emerge, that's where you fully charge your jump, even more than what's necessary to reach the maximum damage. Without your drill dash, you can still be pretty killable when you come out of the burrow, but with all that time underground, you get healed up a decent bit. And it really messes up the enemy team's timing if you don't emerge when they expect you to. You also get your drill dash back faster when you use it underground, and if you do the combo correctly, it'll only be 2 seconds left until the next one. Pretty cool tech for a brand new hero. But now it's time to get into the heroes that are actually in the game right now, starting with Ash. Ash's coach gun is easily one of the better DPS abilities. Not a lot of them are allowed to have boops, and Ash has a really reliable one. But what most people don't know is that the boop is effective up to 15 meters, not just close range, especially with the bigger bullets from Season 9. Coach Gun is like whole hog in that each pellet applies a knockback effect, so the more bullets you hit, the more knockback it deals. It's what makes it even more effective against divers, especially tanks. When Winston or Ball start to engage, you don't want to wait until after they bubble or slam the Coach Gun, at that point you're already in trouble. Coach Gun can disrupt really well, so keep an eye on the tank matchup and the flanks to counter and engage instead of kiting it. Next up is Bastion. Without your form, you can be pretty killable and you have to play a lot more passive and scared, although you don't have to play too far back if you save your grenade. If you're worried about a Genji or a Tracer, you can throw it towards them to force an ability at the very least. And if there's a cross-map Sojourn or Hanzo that's going to melt you, your grenade can turn the duel in your favor instead. It can still be useful to use your grenade during your turret form, especially when you're trying to use a knockback effect to send someone flying, setting them up for an easy kill. Still, the turret form is so strong on its own already, and it's what makes Bastion situationally good even when he's a lot worse after the projectile buffs. Now for Cassidy. This season made him a lot better. His revolver has good enough range to contest most heroes, and his damage is perfect for fragging out with two taps. What most people don't use anymore though is the secondary fire, but it's both necessary in some matchups and a lot more accurate than before. Dumping up to 300 damage instantly is great for bursting shields, especially against Winston. Breaking his bubble consistently really hampers his performance, and you don't need to be close range for it either. Fan the Hammer's bullets are reduced to 50 per shot, but that number only starts to fall off after 20 meters. You'll be doing the full 300 damage to any shield in the game, including Sigma's. If it's left up for even a second, you can melt that thing down so both you and your team can take easy space afterwards. On to Echo. When going for an ultimate dive, sometimes you just want to go in with all your abilities, copy, dump even more abilities, then fly out after your form breaks. But that's one of the easiest ways to waste the ultimate. Although the ultimate charge rate is fast, you need to be consistently dealing damage for around 5 seconds while surviving too. Otherwise you risk dying before even getting an ultimate. Not the lowest possible value scenario, but if you die afterwards, then it definitely is. She's undeniably one of the top burst damage dealers in the game, but you can't rush to that point without poking out a few heroes and abilities first. Moving on to Genji. He's everyone's favorite flanker diver guy, but his tank damage is massively underrated. He's gotten a lot better overall, but it can still be tough to approach the fight with all the spam coming your way. Just like with other aggressive heroes, you'll need to clear out some enemies before going for the big engage. And the easiest heroes to pressure have got to be tanks. Even though they can soak the damage, you can definitely force them very far back with a good setup. Genji's close range burst is massive, so as long as you don't use your dash to approach the enemy, it's an easy escape even against Winston. He can zap through your deflect, but if you can hit the first shots on him, it's really easy to break his armor and survive, setting you and your team up for easy space taking afterwards without much effort at all. On to Hanzo. His arrows are still massive, but so is his hitbox. Playing sniper angles is one of the best ways to abuse his range. He can often be outclassed in the mid-range, even above 20 meters, but at even longer ranges, he's like a whole archery squad in one hero. Getting picks is a lot harder without the one-shot headshot, but you've still got storm arrows to play with. Sniping them cross-map gives you a great chance for a pick and keeps up the steady damage. Your safety from the close fight also ensures you'll get your storm arrows back before you get jumped. Besides Widowmaker, Hanzo is really the only DPS who can play such crazy ranges. His arrow spam is always tough to deal with, but on these long sightlines, it's a struggle to get close to shut him down. On to Junkrat. He's not doing good overall, but that concussion mine cooldown is still just 7 seconds long, and it's not the only upgrade he got from the multiple different patches over the course of Season 9. He hasn't skyrocketed in potential, but knocking people around with your mine is always frustrating for your targets. It's a pretty good debuff to be spamming at the enemy during the fight. Playing for the concussion utility makes for a good neutral, but don't forget to hit the flank sometimes. 
Burst damage on backline is always a big playmaker. Next up is Mei. You can be building your own ultimate a lot faster by fully using your ice block healing. Every time you heal yourself from 50 health or lower, you gain up to 15% ultimate charge. So staying in the ice block the full duration heals you up, restores more ammo, and gives you a good ultimate boost. Make sure to play just defensively enough that your team can still fight with you after your block ends. If you're going to get left behind by your team if you don't leave your block early, it's worth it, but you also shouldn't be forced to ice block on the enemy side of the map. Mei's slow game is fittingly very strong, even if our ice wall and slow make you really want to rush into close range. Next we've got Farah. Her kit still feels really great to play, even if she's not strong enough to make a dent in the meta. And although she's had her vertical and horizontal mobility balanced out, she can still reach some great heights, which is really good for starting the fight. It's nothing new, but it's the obvious best choice for every player right now. Farah's self damage got reduced, so rocket jumping before you jump jet upwards only costs you 20 health. And it's not like you'll be 40 meters away from your supports at that point. It's a quick heal up, and it allows you to get some massive height to start the fight with. Don't forget that using jump jets at full fuel give you 50% more fuel to fly with. It gives you just enough to maneuver to a good altitude to engage from, while still keeping some fuel for the escape. Moving on to Reaper. His full commit style can be easy to counter in ranked, but thanks to the latest buffs, he's got a lot of reasons to play more like an aggressive diver. His ultimate's improved and charges faster, meaning you'll want to be farming damage. And one of the best ways to do it isn't by just spamming the tank. Try flanking non-stop, teleporting aggressively, wraithing out, then going again right after your form comes back online. Your abilities are only 8 and 10 seconds long, which is good enough to get at least 2 cycles in before the fight starts snowballing in one team's favor. You can make that happen if you hit enough shots while teleported in. It's tempting to want to play to set up a perfect sneaky kill, but going more often and then safely falling back to go again is much better. You get a chance for a pick, pressure on the backline, and you build your ultimate consistently by shooting squishies. On to Sojourn. Saving your power slide is pretty important. It makes you pretty much invincible to a first engage because it just moves you so fast. Just instantly dashing backwards while still being able to shoot forward is a massive deal. Sojourn is already a really strong hero, but you don't want to get sloppy and make mistakes. If you're caught without power slide against DPS who have abilities, you can be easily killed. And make sure that any position you have to use power slide to take is clear. You don't want to get there and find a tracer waiting to clip you and follow you for the cleanup. For Soldier 76, here's a classic tip for your Helix Rocket. Although it's a good finisher, it's better used earlier in the duel, right as they start to react to your primary fire spray. When starting an aim duel, the first few shots are up to you to go hit. After that, the 80-80 strafing kicks in and makes it just a bit harder to hit those finishing bullets. Right then is when you want to hit your rocket at their feet, bursting them, and knocking them upwards for a quick and easy cleanup. Aiming at the ground isn't just good for hitting splash damage. On to Sombra. Her ultimate doesn't charge super fast, but it's fast enough that you'll want to spend some more time frontlining. Playing Sombra and only hitting the backline can leave you pretty absent from the game. You have to get a mix of being a damage source in the frontline and executing on the backline. Sombra's pretty well tuned for a specialist hero, so you don't always have to be invisible waiting and watching for your next move. While everyone else is poking, you don't really want to be waiting for the right situation to dive. You can easily force an advantage by hacking into virus or by just spamming the enemy frontline. Forcing Sombra out behind her own team is harder than when she's behind yours. On to the final four, starting with Symmetra. In some matchups, she can still be as tanky as she used to be. Her shield health self-healing goes beyond just the natural regen after 3 seconds. Every time you're dealing damage to shields or shield health, you regen 10, 20, or 30 shield health per second depending on your beam charge level. It's not a monumental amount, but it takes no effort to do. You just automatically heal more when fighting shields or heroes with shield HP. It mostly affects your matchup into Sigma and Zarya, but Zenyatta also has a rough time. Sim can just tank an extra shot in the 1v1, and she's already a hero that can visit the enemy backline often. She's not as strong overall, but she still obliterates shields no problem. Moving on to Torbjorn. He's also got a bit of obliteration in his kit, and it's directed against mostly tanks too. Overload isn't just saved for surviving a dive or spamming chokes harder. Everything about it, the overhealth, the fire rate, and the movement speed, all comes together to make the ultimate tank healing machine. Torb isn't just the anti-dive hero, he's also got the highest shotgun burst damage in the game. During overload, it deals up to 260 DPS, shredding most tanks in 2 seconds. It's not easy to react to a 30% speed boosted dwarf running up and blowing 4 cannonball sized holes in your torso, and for D.Va and Winston with a lower head hitbox, it can get a lot worse. On to the final two, the first being Tracer. Flanking around to get an advantage can be good, but Tracer doesn't need to play so risky anymore. If you have any ranged healer at all, you should make sure to constantly use their line of sight to your advantage. Tracer is one of the few heroes that can live completely on the flank, but when you can get extra heal and support from your team, there's no reason not to take that help, and overwhelm your side of the map even harder. Tracer can and should get picks, but her map control is insanely strong. Trying to force out a Tracer supported by her team is at least a two-man job, and that's just for forcing her out, not for getting the pick. On to the last on the list, Widowmaker. She's easily killed at only 200 health, and it's easy to get snowballed and camped when you die just a single time especially on maps like Dorado where attackers start with a high ground disadvantage. When you start getting stuck, switch your playstyle slightly. Instead of swinging aggressively for picks, you can play to defend your team's sightlines. No matter what side you're on, map control is always switching up as players rotate. As Widow's sitting in the back though, you can control a massive amount of the map without risking your life. Anyone who peeks you can automatically be tagged for at least 120 damage, and headshots are also a lot easier in Season 9. That's it for one pro tip for every DPS. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.